Hello, I'm Pam Carruthers of HealingStars.com. This is the chart for the new moon, 18th of May, early hours, 5 13 a.m. summer time, except for Hove, where I happen to live in the UK. And what's going on here is that the sun and moon are at 26 degrees of Taurus. Here it is, Taurus on the left here. Right at the end, virtually at the end, as a lot of these new moons have been. Now, 26 degrees of Taurus is connecting us all to the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, those beautiful stars in the sky, a cluster, and they're very close to Orion. They're quite magical, quite mystical. And if you have a planet at that degree, I have, it's my moon, then you might well be connected to that constellation. They are carers, they are nursemaids. They foster. So think of that in the sense of the moon is exalted in Taurus. The moon itself is about mothering and caring and Taurus is physical. It's the world of the senses. It's the garden, the delights of colour. And I've been reinvigorating my website, changing the look of it, tuning into the colours that I know I want to present to the world. I encourage you to do that also this new moon and this moon is the seed of the whole month. So what seeds are you planting now at this time? The moon will become visible in a couple of days, the crescent moon, and soon after this new moon the moon entered Gemini. Now in Gemini we have a lot of action. We have Mars, here it is, four degrees of Gemini, and Mercury, 13 degrees of Gemini. And Mercury, that little S next to Mercury here in the chart, is saying it's stationary. In other words, as seen from Earth, it's about to change direction. Mercury is going retrograde on Tuesday at 2.14 a.m. British summer time. You may already be feeling the effect because we entered the shadow period of Mercury in Gemini. And that I have found to be very relevant so if you've had problems with the internet, with Skype, with texting, with mess messages going awry, your computer itself, know that Mercury is asking us to slow down. That's the purpose of the Mercury retrograde. It's about integrating the messages. It's a very psychic time. And Mercury is in its own sign of Gemini. And as you can see, Mars close by so Mercury will join Mars. The Sun will also join Mercury. Not this week but it's going in that direction. The other powerful energy that's operating at this time and will affect Gemini especially because Saturn is at two degrees of Sagittarius and it is also retrograde. Now Saturn is about mastery, it's about discipline However, and there's a lots of howevers with Saturn, it can bring up resistance. It can bring up delay, procrastination. The kind of, not this lifetime, I'll live my purpose, let's hang on, wait a bit, you know. And Saturn in Sagittarius is about our beliefs, our belief systems, our ideologies. There's a lot of ideology going on in the world at the moment, of course, with the IS movement and religion, fanaticism, for all to do. The negative side of, of Sagittarius is righteousness. So this is a month, because this that new moon is very close to the opposition to Saturn, to question beliefs, question yourself, and ask the right question. So tune in, because Mercury is now, because it's going retrograde, connecting us more with the unconscious or subconscious, which is the dream world. Now, move forward a day. Here it is, Mercury. Here's the moon joining Mercury on Tuesday, as you can see. Sun, still Taurus. Wednesday, the moon will go into, will actually be moving into Cancer. But what's happening this week is another very powerful tension between Venus in Cancer and Pluto in Capricorn. This is actually occurring later in the week, it occurs on Friday, 
this is Thursday, so here's Friday. And here it is. It's also a very beautiful day in many ways because Thursday late, Venus and the Moon will join together. They do this once a month and I've been tracking the cycle of this conjunction. And this particular conjunction of Venus and the Moon in Cancer is to do with the sixth chakra, our inner tuition, our third eye. Now Pluto opposite Venus is definitely taking us into the realm of Persephone, the realm of the young girl going down into the underworld. She comes back, she's resurrected. Interestingly, it's Mercury who actually brings her back because Mercury is the guide to the underworld. And then Venus becomes, as Persephone, she actually becomes the queen of souls because it's said she has to return. But she's now the true wife of Pluto, god of the underworld. It's a fascinating story, but it's also about our own personal power, especially as women feminine energy that's masculine it's in, in men as well as women of course and the feminine energy is the ability to receive the ability to listen the ability to bear a child of course to create and that is a very magical process that men can't a bit yet do a bit of teasing there but the other powerful energy that's happening in fact on Thursday is, if you've been looking at the degrees themselves, go back one day, is Jupiter. Jupiter is also at 15 degrees of Leo and on Thursday it's creating a tension to Pluto. Now this tension, this dotted green line you see here, is called an inconjunct aspect. It's known as the letting go aspect. It's a difficulty because the elements fire, Leo's, Jupiter's in Leo, fire sign, and Pluto in Earth, and we all know that, apparently, hopefully we all know that Earth can put out fire. Jupiter in the planet, in the sign rather of Leo, is about creativity, it's about shining, it's about the child, it's playful, it's theatre, it's drama, it's wonderful, it's glorious. Pluto however, takes us into the depths of the unconscious. But think of Jupiter also as our belief systems, mentioned earlier, because it governs Sagittarius. So letting go of belief about your personal power that no longer serves you. That was what my inner guide told me to say to you today. We all have beliefs. We all have beliefs that are set, you know, set in stone almost as children about our experiences about what is acceptable and not acceptable and power we can have a lot of prejudice about power and it, look in the world you can see how misused power can be but when it comes from our true inner teacher then our power is our authenticity that we are the authors of our lives and that is very much the sign of Leo, the heart, connecting to our heart. But also, Venus Moon conjunction in the sixth chakra, going forward again a day. The sixth chakra is the inner tuition, very much to do with the mind, but that mind needs to connect to the heart. And the sign of Venus and the Moon in Cancer is very much about the heart, the caring energy, combined with Leo. These two signs, Leo and Cancer, side by side, are about the king is Leo, the moon is the queen, Cancer, the moon, the queen energy. So that's a glimpse into this week. We get the exact opposition of the sun and Saturn, here it is, on Saturday, Saturn's day, as it happens. The sun, creativity, power, authenticity, being held back, restrained by Saturn. But also remember, Saturn gives structure. Saturn is not to be feared, lord of karma, but it also means we create karma. 
we're not stuck with the karma we brought in with. I don't believe that. I believe we can transcend our astrology with awareness and with working at a deep level to do that. And then finally, I'd like to look at Sunday, because what's happening on Sunday, yay! Again, a lot of these things this week are happening in the early hours of the morning in the UK, but the Moon and Jupiter come together in Leo, and they're building, Jupiter's building now, with this beautiful trine with Uranus in Aries. Now that is a really good connection. Uranus is very much connected to our third eye. It's genius. So creative energy, tune into that during the week. Listen while Mercury's retrograde to the messages that come to you. And that can be as simple as an email or a text, but some piece of information that inspires you. Today, I found out that whales can create rainbows as they exhale with their warm breath, just as we do, they are mammal. And that's what comes from that nose. <laughs> I'm sure I got that wrong, but it's just amazing that they can do that. They are the record keepers of the zodiac, according to the medicine cards that I treasure. I want you to, this week, look for those signs that connect you with this inspiration that the universe wants to share with you. And that is very much to do with Pisces. Neptune, Chiron, both in Pisces. Very much to do with the 12th house of our birth charts. Notice where Mercury retrograde, what house is activating for you. For Cancer Rising like me, it is your 12th house. Enough said. Look more on my website. I've just redesigned it. I'd love to get your feedback. And sign up. My next webinar is coming soon. Thank you for watching.